Hail Cavan in County Cavan, Ireland. And my name is Margaret McKenna. And hopefully now you can see me this time. And the last time the stream wasn't very good. So today I'm going to paint for you a cat. And um, this came as a suggestion by from a, a dear friend or dear a dear dear schoolmate really, who was dear friend had a cat who died recently, and unfortunately you know it's you know it's a time when it's, it's very sad like because i mean i know we have a little dog here or a collie dog and i know i spend most of my time giving out about him but even though i do he's um yeah i wouldn't, wouldn't know what i what i do without him so uh i can i can totally sympathize with this person whose cat was literally like a real companion to her so anyhow the cat's name i believe is Svotia. so i am um, i hope i'm saying that right and um, so we're going to paint that today. I have three pictures I'm going to work from. I don't think the internet connection is fantastic, so it might come and go a little bit, but hopefully it'll be not to be too bad this time. Um, I have three pictures and I've chosen one, but I'll be referring to both of them. And I have another laptop here, which I'm using uh, to take the picture from. And it's the main one is the one that's up on my Facebook page. So um, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by uh, sketching it out. I'd already actually put a little X on the page here from my previous attempt at a live stream. So anyhow, um, we're going to go ahead. So the first thing I'm going to look at, if you if you can want to look back at my Facebook page, you can see the, the picture of the cat. And I'm working from getting the basic shapes first on the page. That's very important. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is work out roughly where the middle line is on the on the canvas. It's just a, not a too big a canvas, um, and the reason is because the, if I look at that picture, I see the nose is approximately halfway across the page. So I'm going to use that as the basis, the baseline for where I'm going to put the nose. And also the the actual picture I'm working from is a slight like one I'm doing. Just going to put this down a little bit so you can get the whole picture in it. More important to get the canvas than me. That's it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that and roughly I've worked out that the ha the head, the whole head, when I say the head, I'm putting it right down to the bottom of the chin, works to, is above just above the halfway line and the nose line is approximately down the middle of the page. So I'm going to work from the basis that then we're going to work the body is the middle of the body is just a little bit to the left, to the right. So you work really where everything roughly is on the page first. So I'm getting a rough size of where the head, when I say the head, I'm talking about the whole head as in to the very bottom of the neck here. So I'm going to just get a rough. Now these are, none of these lines are set in stone. That's the other thing I remember. I always just do a very rough and they're all, I work around them after that. So I'm just going to literally, I'm, that's how rough I'm doing it at initially at the moment. I might do a little bit heavier so you can see it there. Because it's, it's, a, it's a literally a moving, it's a, and I'm using a little bit of yellow ochre and a bit of white, just a little sort of a neutral kind of a shade to start with really. And now I'm going to come down with the body itself. So I'm go it's just going to bring it a very, again, a very rough shape. Now and again, you might see me having to go in front of the camera. If I do, it's just to make sure that I'm doing it, not sort of not doing it sideways or anything like that. So I'm just going to get, so we've got a divide here where the legs are. And it's a little bit more. And just, I'll just go in front for a second to make sure I'm doing this straight, because I'm working from an angle here, which is not really a good idea. And Ideally, my, the camera would be better behind me, but I'm a little limited at the moment. Just getting glad enough to get it up technically working at all, so never mind about where to put the camera. We'll work on that another day. Anyhow, so what, the first thing that I do is when I start to think, how, where am I going to put the eyes and the nose and the mouth? Well, I look at the overall shape. So what I see is I'm looking at a triangle shape, a slight angle. First of all, I see that there is a slight angle on these eyes. So these eyes are not, he's not looking straight out of the camera. He's looking at an angle, something like that. Okay, now I'm deliberately letting the line go a little bit longer so that you can really see what I'm doing here. And then if I work that there's this triangle, so we're going to work from each corner of each eye. So you can imagine there's a corner here and a corner here. And we're going to work that, and there's a triangle that comes down. I'm squinting my eyes now. The reason I squint my eyes is because I'm just literally concentrating on. And this is kind of the area I'm going, this is roughly the area that's, and I, as I say, this is not set in stone. So the nose will be trotty here. And now we're going to put the mouth line will be just, there's a Y, it's like a Y shape for the nose, which will come down. Just get that straight, sorry, I'm just going in front of it for a second. So we're getting here. 
Now, there's a real rounded shape around his face. You say flick back if you can to the page um, or look, scroll down a little bit and you'll see the actual picture I'm doing it from and um, you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about then. There's a rounded little snout area. So we've got a like an area like this and this is just the general I'm blocking in the general shapes I'm not going to not working on I never work on the detail never work on the detail first because what happens then is I think I explained this the last time when we were doing um still life is that if you work on the detail you could get an amazing looking eye for example and what happens then is it might not fit in with the rest of the page so with the drawing so you're much better off to working on the general to the detail blocking in everything very roughly initially and also it means that it's not as I say, it's not set in stone it means that you can move that around later on because you know often i look at it and think oh god actually you know that eye has to come over a little bit and oh that's not quite right but i have the general idea first so none of it is a major big ordeal to move because if you've got an amazing looking eye for example and all of a sudden then you have to change it because it's all off to the side it's it's very it's very disheartening to be honest because it makes it look like you you know you you know you have to really start all over again type of feeling um whereas if you do it this way any little change is never a big deal so i'm going to just work now to where his so he's got if i look now i can see the center line coming down here um and is is anybody asking something there i can't see just i thought i saw sometimes it comes up as a little ding will be a comment line if you make any if you ask him questions please do if you have any questions let me know Hiya Karen, hi Grania, and hello Joy, how are you? Um, I hope you're doing well over there and all is good. Now, I'm just going to bring out a little bit. Now I'm going to draw the eye here. Now I'm actually going to bring out the eye a little bit more. Now you can see how rough I'm doing this. And I'm going to bring out another eye, the other eye. Now the eye is, is it's, point, it's a kind of a, a lemon shaped almost. So we've got the nose line here, got the nose line here, and you can see how rough I'm doing this. This is very, very rough because these are all, I'm just blocking it out in shapes. And I just want to make the, that eye in a bit actually, because now I'm looking at it, I want to bring this eye in a bit. And this is how rough I do it initially. And then I'm just what up to the top of the head, just got it like that that mind if I go in front of the camera for a second there just to have a check my check my bearings because I might could be doing it sideways without realizing it when I'm at an angle as I say, I've done that so many times with pictures that I've um, worked on and think I'm doing it wonderful great picture and then I look in front of it and it's all sideways on me because I haven't been at the right angle so now he's got a little sort of a jaw or his, his cheekbones so it kind of follows around to where the line of the this this break here where the where the, the little um you can I can only barely see it there's, there's a just a just just barely you can just see a line here it's like the shape I'm just getting that general shape you can see it following through here on this side here you can really see when you start to draw cats how they're like lions how they come from the wild animals you know when you see the structure of their faces really and they're like mini lions and this area here is that shadowed part that's beneath the yeah okay i'm just going to bring a little bit down here like this And now we've got this is this still going to be all shadowed underneath here. So we're going to actually. That's going to be where the. So just let me go in front of it for a second. Sorry, I might have to do that every now and again because I really might um, make it very sideways otherwise. So I apologize if I do. I say I will have to at some stage have to get this camera up higher, but I will come backwards so you'll be able to see it in a second. Just I just don't want to have it done and then realize that I've done it completely always basically because I haven't been the right angle and um, okay so I'm going to come down here with this and I'm just going to just work out roughly where everything is I'm just going to have his divide of his legs is going to be I just go back here for a second he's got a smooth bit in there he's got a, a bit in there like that 
And you can see how rough I do this now initially. Now I'm going to colour a background colour in first. So I'm going to do a kind of slightly a darkish sort of shades. So I'm going to work with a bigger brush and because it'll make it, the cat um, come out a bit better. So I'm going to add a bit of my, let's see, I have some burnt, burnt umber here, which is a dark brown. But I can add different shades into it. So I'm going to be kind of quite casual with this kind of a background. I can play around with it a little bit. I might add a bit of my purple shades, my violet. And then this is this one here isn't a very expensive one, but here it's fine for doing background. It's it's there wouldn't be a strong pigment in these colours, um, compared to the, some of the tube ones, the um, so the, these type of ones here. The System Three are quite a good quite a good um good and fairly strong pigment, um, and these ones wouldn't be as strong, but they're fine for. I've done many a picture with these ones here. Um, it depends on how how consistency you want or what depth of colour you want. They're all a little bit more liquid as well. So I'm just going to kind of casually. And I don't care if I go in on the body a little bit because this is sort of all open to. So I'm just going to get a rough background here. And I can put different shades coming through and I could even put a little bit of. Let's have a look. A little bit of burnt sienna in here. Burnt, burnt sienna is a sort of a reddish brown colour, which I'll be using on the cat as well in places. So it's just nice to change, do different shades, come to just, and you don't have to be too exact with this kind of a shade before you do it. A little bit brownish. And the idea is I just get a general black dark colour on the background, and then you can sit, and it's still not open to it's open to maneuver, if that's the word. And then we just bring that down a bit like that. You can you can come backwards and forwards, you know, and look at it, go off, make yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, come back and you can look at it after. So I'll put this up on YouTube later on as well, so you'll be able to hopefully tune in. A lovely looking cat now, I must say. It's very, very, very definite little stare on it. Very intelligent looking, to say the least. And I must say, as I say, we have our dog here and we had cats. But unfortunately, our cats had absolutely no road sense whatsoever. And the few couple we had, they didn't, unfortunately, they... They ran out on a road and I wouldn't mind, but our road isn't exactly the busiest, but they somehow seem to manage to do it, which is, um, it was a long time ago. But our dog, I must say, even though, as I say, he's, he's a real, he's a real pet, even though he's a mad yoke. And, um, I must say it would miss him. Now put a bit of white in here. If it happened to him, I'd, oh, he's, I just couldn't imagine the place without Freddy. Like he's synonymous with this, our house at this stage. The life of Riley, yes, he's 10 years old now, but he wouldn't think about him, he's like a pup. Now, I'm just going to put a bit of white in it too, just, just to vary it a little bit. Now, just get an overall shade on here, okay? We can come back and we can change or whatever, we'll see. Now, I'm just going to come back up and get my picture up here. Now, I'm going to, first, again, as I say, I'm going to work from the general to the detail. So, the general to the detail means I'm going to work on an overall colour on him. So, first of all, or her, I should say, it's a her. And I'm just going to put a white, but I'm just going to very put a very, very soft tone of um, just a little tiny bit of ultramarine into it. There's a little, just a tiniest little hint of a bluey shade, just a tiny touch. It's literally taking an off white shade out. And even at this stage, and what I'm doing is I'm using little small strokes at this stage, if you notice, because even though we're at a stage where it's not really, um, we're not doing the final, you know, the final layers of it or anything, you always think of what you're painting, always think, what is it I'm painting? So you don't just go up and down and like that. You think, well, what is it I'm doing? If I'm doing grass, am I doing grass? Am I doing bushes? Am I doing a sky? Am I doing clouds, which are more billowing? Or am I doing fur? And in this case, I'm doing fur, and fur is soft, and it's sort of 
it's short hair. So even at this stage, even though you can't really see it in detail, um, it's amazing how it just at all adds up. I'll put a bit, a bit more yeah, blue, but don't worry about that. I'm gonna put the, let the blue go through it because I'll, I'll be layering it up with white with them. Um, I'm going to be layering it up with the white later on. So I'm just going to get this in. As I say, just getting the general to the detail. I'm just going to have to go in front of it here for one second so I get this. Okay. I'm just going to bring it down like that. I don't mind if I drag other shades with it at the moment because I'm going to be working over this again later on, so that doesn't bother me at all. And I'm going to start using, I might use a smaller brush off the face. I'm using a little flat brush here at the moment, um, this little flat one. And again, I'm just going to work out now, where are my whites on this face? I'm just going to put up a white more. Now, let's see, we're going to just put a bit under It's a funny time at the moment when everybody's kind of got so much time on their hands. It's, I suppose the one good thing is that, you know, it is time we can actually maybe take time down to, to do things like paint or read or write. Or There's so many artistic um, pastimes that, that are not just pastimes, but actually really helpful in so many ways. Um, really good to sort of mentally just to tune out and get away from the obvious of the moment, which is... Which we have to be careful of at the moment which we're always being careful is to stay safe in that but sometimes it's nice to drift into another world and just forget all about that what's going on out there for a little while now i'm just bringing a little bit of white in under the eye now the other eye it's kind of more it's more um beigey shade so underneath so now i'm just going to bring that like that and I'll come back to the shading again. Now I'm just going to get a bigger colour on my um on the on the brownie colour. So I'm going to mix a bit of a little bit of yellow ochre again. I'm just going to blend it in with a little bit, a little bit of our burnt sienna. And the burnt sienna is a slightly reddish brown shade. Um, I'm going to bring a little bit of that in with our yellow ochre here. Just I'm just going to build it up. It's more or less to mark in nearly where everything is on the face because then when you have everything marked in in colour, you can kind of and on the body, you can then sort of go back and um start working on the details so i'm just going to get a bit of beer again i'm using small strokes leave a space for the nose and i'm just going to watch the eye now the eye is slightly a little bit movable yet i haven't so the eye is not set as i say in stone yet at all by any means Put a bit more brownie shade into that a bit of white When I say brown, oh, a bit more white. When I say brown, I'm using a burnt umber here. It's different shades, so many different shades of brown. Okay, just get this down. When I'm using a dark, I'm using a, just have a look there, that, I'm going to bring that eye down a bit. And so this is where you can play around with all the little the features at this stage don't worry about my eye or his eye or her eye i should say we're just going to get um and i'll just do a bit on the ear here but we're going to put a darker shade i'm just literally just barely move that very dry brush a lot of the time i don't use it very much um i don't use the the, the water very much often i just use the you sometimes even just go from paint to to um to canvas you know or to, you know from one paint to the other i just smudge it off on a on a um on a piece of rag that i have here in my lap and i just smudge it off and just work on to the next color unless it's really like if i want to go from a really light color um after a dark color i might have to wash it off now now i'm going to come back now and decide where a bit more with the dark so there's a dark shade on them as well now i'm not going to use a black even though it looks quite black here 
And I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, um, I'll just get a small brush here for a moment. This my little brush here it is. Smaller, just a smaller little flat brush. And I'm going to get a little of my ultramarine, um, ultramarine blue, ultra, and just a little bit of it. I have it here out in a tray here. I'm just going to take a rub of it. It's a bit I had left over from another class, so I would use utilize all at the moment because um, there's not a lot of paint paint out. So I want to use, I'm using the ultra, ultramarine, and I'm mixing some of my burnt umber, the darker brown, into that. And that gives a quite a dark shade, almost a blacky shade. So I'm just going to start marking in where everything is now again. So now I'm just going to, can I turn this a little bit to myself now without, that you can still see it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I just want to get a better look at the angle here because I think I'm, I really want to be careful. I don't end up doing it sideways. So this is this blows is here. And the other eye is going to go up here. And there's roughly, even the cat, there's roughly about the eye between the two eyes. It's like a human, actually. I'm just going to put a bit of black up here. When I say black, it's not actually black. This is actually, as I say, ultramarine mixed with burnt umber. You could use Van Dyke brown, you could use raw umber. Raw umber is a little more dead of a brown, but um, the, the, the burnt umber is quite nice because it's a little bit of a, a little bit of depth to the colour. And you see how light I'm using the brush. Very, very light stroke here. Very, very dry brush effect, really. It's really like a dry, you don't use too much paint on it. You don't use too much water. Now, he's got definite marking coming down like this, she has. We'll work on the, the, the details of it afterwards. Just want to get all the markings in. Another one here. And we're just going to get a little, a little pinpointed here, like a little, what's it called? Widow's Peak, is it? And your hair comes down, it's a bit like that on the cat in this colour. I was here like that. And a little, there's two little. Now, we're going to add a little bit of the yellow, the burnt sienna into that. Do you like my tray? My mixing tray, I'm using, I use just, it's very handy, just use old trays um, from vegetable trays, sliced chicken trays, anything. They come in very handy, recycling for paints. Now, these lines dictate down the, la the nose, dictate just the shape of where everything is. So I'm just putting these in. The, again, this is quite still quite rough because we're just going to come back in the darkest shade up here. Take a bit of that off. So I just don't want too much on it. And I'm going to, now, I'm going to mix a sort of shadow shade here. So again, I'm going to get a bit of my blue and my brown together. And I'm going to add a little bit of my under yellow ochre colour into it. I'm just going to get a shadow in here. Again, small strokes I'm starting to use. I'd add a bit of that burnt sienna into it. All the time the small strokes it gives it that impression that feeling of um of, of of fur even though it's only just even if even at this stage even before you're i'm just going to put a bit around the edge there and there's a little bit of my other color down here a little I'm trying to see is it there i think it is Hard to judge really. Maybe it's a shadow. It's a little shadow. So we're going for the shadow. I usually use. I say usually use a little bit of the, the ultramarine and a bit of the um the burnt sienna or burnt umber. I mean, which is this one here, the, the dark brown. So mix the two of them. So hopefully, you say you can come back and look at this later on. You can dip in and out. Go back, have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, make your dinner, come back, whatever you want to do, and um and and, and tune in later on. So you can dip in and out. And as I said, I'll be putting this up on YouTube for those of you who don't um, have Facebook later on. So I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow under here. So I'm just going to mark out. Now I just want to check this out now. 
just gonna sound effects is good. So I'm looking at this shape. Sometimes what you do is you look at the negative shapes. Now a negative shape is the shape you don't draw. So rather than draw, say, oh, I'm going to draw the nose, which like you can you, you look at the shape that you're not drawing. So I'm looking here at this shape around here, the shape that's going around the side of his nose, the outside shape, and it comes down here like that. I'm just sort of squinting my eyes a little bit doing this because I can see better. And that will help me to get you know, where, where I want to put in the, the mouth shape. And here I'm just going to look at this shape here. You see that comes down more like that. that. So I'm seeing now what I've got to do is I have to add a little bit more of the white here. So I'm just seeing it here that this white has to come out a bit more here. And a little bit up here. Working the little, working the shape around the, making a lighter shade around the eye. So I'm going to make a little white with my yellow ochre, which is that sort of, um, sort of like French mustard color. And a bit here as well. So I'm just kind of getting this overall shade here, and it comes down on the side of the eyes. It comes up. In between here as well. And say so this is just all marking this bit by bit, building it up. Find where the light bits are, find the dark bits are, and you build it up. Now the eyes are an interesting shade. So and I'm looking at them. Okay, so they're like what I would say they're like a yellow. They're like a yellow oak. Naples yellow with green in them. If that makes Naples yellow now, is like a creamy yellow color. It's um, I don't have it here actually, but you can kind of mix it up. With, you, with a real yellow, which I have somewhere. And um, here it is, a little bit of processed yellow here. I don't have cadmium yellow. I'm afraid to say I'm a little bit short on my um, <clears throat> on my um, supplies. And I don't think people are delivering at the moment, so I have to make do with what I have. So, if Karen is still watching, I need some of your colors now. That's what I need. And um, on your big array of colors, that's what I need now. So I'm just gonna get more white out here. So I'm going to mix a little bit of white. I can just get out of this. Excuse the noise of this. It sounds a bit. There we go. Oh, that's alright. Didn't make any noise there. <clears throat> so I've got white like that, and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of yellow. Oh, so you can't see it there. A little bit of yellow ochre, and it gives it a creamy shade sort of a creamy white shade and it's really like a very like what we'd call a naples yellow if you buy it in the tube so i'm going to add to that a little bit of green so i could mix actually a little bit of if i mix a tiny bit of blue into that i want to get a bit more different green than that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring it a, yeah a little tiny bit of blue i'm just going to give it a, a first coat here and add a bit more green into that now just want to get a bit more of a now just getting started to get it now we're going to start to get a cap face here now so what i'm going to do next up is, is nose in his nose is very much like a burnt sienna a burnt sienna color very reddish brown nose he has or she has i should say i'm calling it a he sorry for i don't mean to call you a he oh let me picture back there Now, it's just, I'm going to just do a triangle shape initially because we can work on the triangle shape. So at least now we have a basic shape in, you see. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start working on the, working on, I think I'll work on the body first and we work up to the face because the body is kind of an overall kind of a colour. So it's not as much detail on it. So we're going to make it a nice bit of white. And I'm just going to start to, just flicking it in. I have a nice brush here. Which one is this one here? Um, this is, it's like a rake, and you can see some of the, let's see if you can see it better there, if you can see it close. See some of the, 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 the hairs are longer, some of them are shorter, so, and they're quite, it's quite good for doing, for doing fur, but you don't have to use one of them, you can use, just use an ordinary one, you can see it gives it a, because the hairs are, are spread out, it means that you get, you get that division in it. So, but I'm using very small little, and he's quite white down here, she is. So I'm just going to come back in. 
but I'm going to work back from the white and I'm going to work back into the shadow. I'm not going to be too fussy, so I'm going to get a bit back more into my shadow colour, which is my white with a little blue and a little brown into it as well. Just like that. More brownie. I'll just take it off and then I'm just going to bring that back in this corner here a bit more. I might give it a bit more depth in that. So I don't mind if I bring in a bit of blue into it like that. Okay, don't be afraid. You can actually mix a lot of the time on your actual palette as well. So I often mix, I just put my little bit of blue on and I put a bit of little brown over it, just like that. You don't actually have to mix it all on your tray, if you know what I mean, on your palette. You can actually do it on the page itself. So I'm just going to give it a little bit. And I say these brushes are very handy. And it's a very light touch. Oh yeah, the other thing I, uh, I keep telling everybody is hold your brush very light when you're painting. Don't hold it like that. Don't please, you know, that's the one you don't is hold it like a pencil. I say this to kids as well because <clears throat> it's really important. And it's amazing how many people because it, and it get do it, and they think you have more control over it, but you have less control. You're actually much better if you hold it really far back and really light because the more the lighter you hold your brush, actually the the more control you have on it really. So I'm just gonna. Bring that in like that. So we're getting lots of little flickers. If you see that, and if you can actually see it up close, I'll show this online afterwards and you'll be able to see it better when, when it's done. As I'll take a photograph of it and you'll be able to see the result of it. Now I'm going to add a little more. We're just going to wash my brush very lightly here. And I'm going to do a little bit on the other fur here. So we had a, um, a yellow ochre, which I just have to find again. Here it is. And I'm going to actually use a bit of raw sienna with that. Now raw sienna is actually very like a yellow ochre. It's just like a, like a deeper kind of a shade. Um, again, a bit like a dark mustard um, mustard shade. It does depend also on the make you would get. Um, that's a quite a, a quite a strong colour there. In the Windsor and Newton, they do vary a lot from make to make. That's the other thing you need to be careful of is what make you get because sometimes they're very different from maker to maker. I'm just going to add a bit of brown into that because that's quite strong. So I'm going to add a bit of my my um, burnt sienna. Or, or sorry, my raw, my burnt umber. With all these burns mixed up. The burnt umber, which is a darker brown. I'm just going to mix that with, and I'm going to start just dragging it along. Into. And sometimes I pick it up, I'll have a bit more. As soon as you can work from one colour to the next, you can actually work, you know, dip your brush, go from your raw sienna for example into your brown flick it on the side a bit of blue in there now as well which i didn't mean to get a bit of the two of them just flick it and you end up with both colors coming up in your brush at the same time which is a lovely effect i'm just going to drag that into the white because we work the other things we work from the back to the front because remember everything in the back is behind so you work that way so therefore when you're working towards the front um the the, 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 the strokes are actually on top so I'm just going to work this and it's because it's a bit lighter then as it comes to the front. So I'm going to add a bit of white into that. Yeah. Now I'm going to work on this area here and all this area here. So what I'm going, I have only blocked it in, as you can see first, um, in the white kind of the off white color. So I'm going to look at our um, areas of shadow in this. And if you look, there's quite a lot. If you look back at my Facebook page, if you want to have a look at anybody who's joined, um, just look back at the page the picture below. I have this I scroll down and see a picture of the cat that I'm doing. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the, the brown again, if I can get my, my um, burnt umber color here, which is a dark brown. I'm just going to squeeze a bit of that. Not that much, but I just went a bit over the top there. But anyway, anyway OK, so I'm going to use a bit of that with a bit of my ultramarine, which I have out here, which is a blue shade I'm just going to stick that back over here and I'm going to get the two of them mixed together with the white in the tray here like that take it off the bird take it off a little bit and I'm just going to watch where are we going with our might even a bit darker than that I'm just going to see where we are with it so there he's got a little lines down here I'm literally just marking out now where which way is the body's going so it's kind of like that this little rift this little rift sort of layers of fur as it were 
and there's a good lot under here and this part comes under i'm just working from the neck down at the moment i'm not going to bother with the upper part just yet so i'm just going to take that put that color and then take it off the brush it's a bit of brown blue and white take it off the brush as much as i put it on i'm just going to put it on there like that and then take it off the side and i'm just going to use this brush i said this this brush that has less like a rake i'm showing it there to anyone who's joined um it's just and i'm just going to bring this build this up bit by bit It's kind of little layers of fur here. Now, so hopefully you'll have is be able to say to look back at this at any stage if you want to. Um, it's really I'm just marking in where I see those little lines of fur, where I see the breaks in it, the dark, the darker patches. And this is not the final thing by any means, so. So you can just come back, go off, get a cup of tea, come back, tune in again whenever you want. Or as I say, wait till it's over and you can do look at it then. And apologies earlier on for the live stream. Um, I'm out here in my art cabin and I get, if I have, I have an extension on my broadband which comes out to the room in the, in the house. And it's grand on this laptop. This is my daughter's laptop here I'm using and for the live stream. Um, my own laptop wasn't working. I got it working, but the live stream won't work on it for some reason. So that was one problem. And then I put it onto my phone, but on my phone it just kept cutting out and telling me that, there was, that the internet wasn't good enough and it kept freezing. So I said, well, that's not much good. So I had to go back and use her, um, my daughter's laptop. So unfortunately, um, that's just the way it is at the moment. I'll have to try and sort out the technical problems with mine because it, it does actually get good reception on it. it. Does pick up the internet well, but it's just um, it's just Facebook being weird. I don't know. So I'll try it later on when I have time. Now I'm just getting those so little layers of fur. Just gonna make sure that should be down a bit more there. Got a lot of shadow in here. A shadow in there. Ah, oh, good. <laughs> Thanks, Grania. Oh, she's a good bit of go to go yet now. She's just getting her, her under layer now of the of the shadow colour so far. So I'm just gonna get Okay, now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out with a, a lighter colour obviously on top of that. So I'm going to take off the clean that brush off and I'm going to get a bit lump of my white and I'm going to mix it in with the grey to start with it just a very so it's a lot lighter but just a little hint of off white as yet. And I'm just going to start to build it up a bit. Don't want to put too much on my brush there like I did that time. Just build it up. As I say, I'm hoping to try and get this. What time is it now? It's so I start at half four. So I reckon I can't see the time. Sorry. My eyesight is sometimes not great at close. So oh, it's alright for painting. But I'm messing with doing really narrow paint. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting the little the little flickers in here. And you're going I'm going over going in between the shadowed areas. And flicking it out a little bit on the edge. Background is sort of dry now, so you can <clears throat> see me. So I can just So 
I'm just going to hold it like too dark there. I'll have my lighter in there a bit. Bring this right over here a bit. Just checking that. Actually, I might bring some of the darker colour a little bit over here as well. Just bring it out to the edge a bit more. Back with my light one now. So just working this through here. And I've still not finished this by any means. I'm just going to go back and come back through this again. This is just another layer of it, as it were. A darker shadow there with a bit more brown in it. So just bring this a little bit here like that. I'm just putting a bit more of the shadow here, just softening the shadows here in places. Just a little bit of the brown. Now like that. Okay, so it's all the same. It's all the same, different combinations of the same colour basically. Um, just now I'm going to come leave that just for a minute. I'm, I'm not finished with that by any means. I'm just going to bring a little bit more of the shadow up underneath the chin here. Because we've got a chin area, the little chin area around underneath the mouth area here. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a shadow here like that. Bring it up the side. And bring it in here. So we're gradually getting the shape, this colour of the... Right up across on the cheek here. And a there. I have a bit, taking a bit off my brush, I'm just going to put a bit up underneath here as well. On the under part of the nose, or the, on the, on the, just above the mouth. Again, it's too bright, it's too dark, and that's fine. I don't want it to, I, I'm a little bit more light in it. I want it. Still kind of shadowed. Just didn't look check there on that. Just give it a check to see exactly where this the area is here. So this is gonna be a little bit more. So it's the same, it's all the time I'm using burnt sienna, uh, sorry, burnt umber, yellow, um ultramarine and white here. And so you can head off, get your cup of tea, come back, look at it and see how we're getting on. Because it's kind of picture that takes a while to do. So you can dip in and out wherever you want. And you can look at it afterwards. Oh, picture's gone. Little flickers of the after after after. The fur, softness of the fur there. Now, that just only working through, I'm going to work through the overall colours and I'll come back through it again. That's by no means anywhere near done because we build it up bit by bit. So I'm going to gradually get a little more colour on the side of the cheeks now. I'm going to use a little bit of my brown in with my yellow ochre and my um, burnt sienna. I'm just going to bring it in. Just working it exactly where this is. I'm sent further actually. Just looking at that now. See, this is where you go back and you realize where you have to bring out a little bit. So I'm going to bring out that white on the face a bit more out here. See the wider face there. So this is when you get to notice it when you do these bits here. 
And I'm going to bring the shadow underneath it a little bit longer too, or a bit up the side here. My shadow color just up there a bit more, just fractionally. And a bit on that side too. We're going to build that out in a second. Now, I'm going to bring up a little bit of the, the dark again, the dark brown and blue. The dark brown is my burnt, sea, burnt umber and my ultramarine, which makes a very dark shade. I'm just going to emphasize these a bit more. Check where exactly everything is on the face. There's a little bit more shadow on the top of the nose as well. So I'm just going to use a bit of brown and my, my dark brown and my white here. And a tiny bit of yellow ochre into that. I'm just going to put a little bit on the top of the nose here. A little bit more yellow ochre onto it, just a tiny bit. And it just comes around. One thing to keep doing is check back at your drawing all the time, or not so you're strong, but you're the subject of your picture because you can get carried away and not look at your picture and you kind of think, that's grand, I'm getting off in another little world. And then you look back at it and it's completely different than what you actually see on, on what you're actually copying from. So always be careful of that. Your observation is so important. As I often, as I said, I think the last time I've done exercises, and anybody who knows me, I've done, um, I've done classes where I've done exercises doing life drawing, and where we actually don't look at the page or at all, and I know we, it ends up mad looking, but you know it's a great training exercise because you just look at what you're painting, and even though obviously it doesn't look like the thing when you're finished because you've got arms and legs everywhere, and God knows where the eyeballs are, but it's it, it's it's great exercise because when you start to actually look back at it. Or, you know to do the drawing properly you actually really observe it so looking at what you're painting is one of the most important observations that's one of the things that art will teach you is observation if nothing else um you learn how to observe things and i always say that's one of the the gifts i think of, of doing art is that um i'm just going to use a smaller brush if that's a smaller yes it is a smaller brush um is is to, is to see things differently um certainly if you're doing landscapes if you're doing painting um, art painting landscapes for example it's a great way of making you see the nature around you and you notice colors that you never would have noticed before and um, i'm going to use a smaller brush again here or a narrow brush i can just find one here yeah, i have one out here but i don't know where i put it that's the trouble i may have put it out somewhere and i don't see it now just the reason i'm going to put a narrow one here is i'm going to just go around the eyes a little bit more definite so i'm going to get the, my blue again and my brown so we'll get my my ultramarine ultramarine they say reason i say ultramarine is because ultramarine is a very it's a very definite blue um in terms of the fact that it's not a greeny blue some of the blues are very greeny hue to them like saying phthalo green or those uh, even cerulean it still hasn't a really really bluey shade if you want to get a gray shade use an ultramarine if i had a choice of any one blue to to, to pay to to get to buy you know in the shop i'd usually have my ultramarine and um, even though I use lots of other different blues at different times, um, like it's it's just it's you, you kind of can't go wrong with it in a sense because at least you have one definite blue because it's a good mixing blue as well. Now I'm just gonna establish a bit because I'm gonna get the eyes to make such a difference. It's got a real dark shadow there, and I'm just watching that now. It comes down. As I say I'm using the dark brown and blue. It's not. It looks almost black. I'm just using the side of my um my my a bit of cardboard here to actually um is it kind of a you can't see the under part of the eye too well here and we're going to do the same on this side and it comes up in a sort of a point here so just looking at it in relation to the brand of the head it's a little triangle a bit there triangle a bit and then there's this part here and then it comes up quite high up here mm. 
most of this is shadow actually it's just a shadow line of the eyes are they're sort of the depth the way they're set into the head so you're just getting the shadow line around it but it kind of gives it that intensity i suppose of the stare too Give that a look here. Just want to give it a good look here for a second. Just studying my studying my my um the eyes here. Now I'm just going to give it a a greeny hue. So I'm actually going to use a bit a little bit of blue or blue yellow even and a bit of my ultramarine and make a greeny shade out of that because and I put a white to that. A little bit more yellow. I think it's a kind of a yellowy green. Definitely yellowy green, in fact. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to drag that around across the eyes a bit here, like this. So I mixed a bit of yellow and blue and a little bit of white into it as well. It went up into my red black there, but that doesn't matter. I'll fix that in a second. I would say this is just it's amazing when you get the eyes in place too it kind of really um it kind of you really sort of see where you're going with the picture and it's a lighter bit to the side so i'll just get a bit of my creamy color i made earlier on which is like a naples yellow which was literally a mix of white and um, yellow and a little bit of yellow ochre which is the mustard color i'll just put it a little bit around the edges here a bit in here as well and there's a very light bit in the eyes as well so i'm going to add a white into my my mix of green which the green was yellow ochre or sorry um just a yellow i used a, a um process yellow but if you use cadmium yellow it'd be perfect and um, I use the ultramarine just for to make my my um. I'll just put a bit more white into that. Do 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 do. Bit of brown white. I'm not doing it really white just yet. Just flicking it around near the inside of the eyes. Another whitish bit just. Look at the shades. It's amazing you think an eyeball is just one shade and there's so many different shades in it. Don't mind I went up on top of the, the, the black. I'll go back over the black again. So I'm not panicking about that. And there's actually a bit of my burnt sienna, that reddish brown in the eyes too. So I'm going to take a little bit, very little bit on the brush. And often I say you don't you use less is more. I often use my hand, which I know is not probably the best thing to do, but I, I do. Another reason for having to wash my hands is if I'm not washing my hands any enough as it is. I have no skin left on them soon. I'm just going to put a little bit of a little bit down here as well. A little bit underneath here in this part of the eye. Very little. Take it off the brush. Smudge it in. Often very dry brush I often use on painting. Very dry, Not all the time. Sometimes you have to use it. Um, but a lot of the time it's a very dry brush you use. There's a line. I just want to get a nice light bit there. So I'm going to, I'll say hopefully you'll be able to see this afterwards. When I have it up on Facebook, you'll be able to see it better. Um, you can see what I'm doing here. That's too dark. I went right into the blue there, talking to me. I wasn't looking at what I was doing. So I'm just going to take that out. A little bit of white on that, a little bit of that yellow and green. Which is perfect because there's a darker bit there in the corner. Now for the eye, the eye, the um, pupil, I'm going to use my blue brown, my ultramarine, and my um, burnt umber, and I'm going to put the lines, the slitty line down there for his eyes, because he's looking at the sun, into the light. So I'm 
so you can start to see them coming. When you get the eyes in, it's amazing how much different it makes to them. Any picture, I think, when you get eyes in. I'm going to put this up here. You might emphasize this a bit more. Now I'm just going to get this dark down here. Now I'm not finished with that there yet. I'm just going to leave that for a moment. I'll come back to that shortly. Uh, because I'm a bit more shadow to do in the eyes yet. But I'm just going to move down to the nose because I'm just looking at the nose and it's a very strange shape just at the moment. So I'm going to get a bit of my um, burnt sienna, reddish brown, a little bit of my um, raw sienna. The two raw sienna and red, uh, burnt sienna, they're quite different really. Um, burnt sienna is much more like a reddish brown. The other one is much more mustard like that. So you say that a bit like um, yellow ochre shade, like a deeper version. I'm just going to just check the shape. Because it's a little bit twisted at the moment, that nose, and I'm looking at it. Uh, so I'm going to just bring it over a little bit here like this. So sit in front of it for a second when I get it. And I'm going to put a little bit of dark here in this nose here. Because I'm going to just mark in where everything is on the nose. So let's get my dark brown and blue together here. Let's paint on it. I'm just going to settle where that nose is. I say I hope you can say you can go off now, make yourself a cup of tea, come back whenever you want, in and out, just dip in and whenever you want, or you can paint along or have a look at it after. As I say, I'll put it up on YouTube later on so that because I know there's quite a few people have have said to me they don't have I know people who don't have Facebook. And I said, Well, if I can get it up on YouTube I will. So I managed to work out how to do it yesterday, which is great. Took a while to do, but I got it there, so yeah. Let's have a look here. So we're going to put a bit of more light on top of his nose here, like this. I'm just going to put start putting. I'm just going to gradually put a little bit of white in with my yellow ochre, a little bit of brown. I'm going to start building out the hairs on him, just little, literally. And I'm going to go from one colour to the next. So there's going to be a bits of yellow ochre, it's bits of uh, my brown, it's bits of my white. Um, just bringing up a texture on him first of all. And he's got a bit lighter there. I'm actually going to use a little bit of my creamy, oh, a bit longer there. Bit of my Naples yellow colour I had earlier on, which was a mixture of my um, yellow, my white, and my yellow ochre. I'm just putting that there for now. I'm back with my brownie shades here on top. The idea is that I get this done before, uh, by six o'clock ish so that we can you can work so we get the overall plan of it as it were. A bit there. And a bit of shadow down that side of the nose there. And I'm gonna bring a shadow on top of the wait a minute, wait a minute. now I'm just gonna get a bit of brown and my dark shade here. I'm just gonna oh no, way too much. Way too much on the brush, and I'm just gonna just gonna bring a line across here. A little bit of white through this here. There's a bit of my white with my yellow, my my burnt sienna shade. Now. As I say, we can, it's not, I know I have my back turned to you most of the time, 
Um, but that's because I'm concentrating on the on the on the the artwork. Um, and so you can dip in and out anytime you want. It's just um, give you. I, I just explain little bits as I go along. So what I'm really doing is I'm just lightening up here on the nose a little bit, adding little bits of white into into my under color. I'm just gonna building it up. So I'm working from all the time, general to detail, general to detail. That's the whole idea as you go along. You're working always work on the on the light on the very general first, working into the into the detail. So I'm gonna get a little bit of my browns. So really, I'm going working from the colors I'm using. Really, are the burnt sienna, the the burnt sienna, burnt umber. Um, working from one shade into the next. And I'm just tipping now here a little bit of burnt sienna and a bit of burnt umber into into the into the nose here like that, just to build it, give it a softness around the edge. And then I'm going to put a little bit of white. Hi Claire, how are you? How's it going? I'm sure you're busy painting. And Claire now is a brilliant artist. Actually, we have a couple of artists on today. We've got Karen is on. Well, she was. I don't know if she's there now. She was earlier on, and um, she's the cat woman. So uh, under pressure now with this cat, so I am. She's definitely a cat woman here, the cat. And she's good. At, she does some lovely cat paintings. So um, yeah. Let's see, does she give my give me the the nod of approval? I don't know if she's there now. Anyway, okay. So here we go. A little bit of white and our and our and our and our burnt sienna and i'm just working in detail on the nose i'm just trying to, this part is quite you probably want to be seeing this up very close and unfortunately i don't have the facility at the moment to do this and maybe down the line i might be get really fancy and get another camera going but sure we'll see right now i don't unfortunately i can't do it but we'll get there so i'm just building this up which you'll be able to see actually when i put this up on the on my um when I put it up on the page, you'll be actually able to see it better what, what I'm talking about because you'll be able to see what I've been talking about and you see the actual result of it, as it were. Now, I'm just going to come in with a bit of the brown again around the eyes. I'm hopping around a little bit now because I'm just kind of finding out one little bit. So I'm going to put a little bit of the brown just in here. Very dry brush, very little on the brush, even less on the brush. That's why sometimes handy to have a little piece of a, something beside your um, and it's a bit of a shadow shade. So there's a little shadow shade over the eye. So I'm going to again make it a bit of my brown. My blue, which is my ultramarine and my and my um, burnt umber, and I'm just going to actually put a little watery this time, which is not like what I normally do. But I'm taking it in the in the palette, taking it off. And just, I actually I know should put it on the side of my hand, which probably isn't the best idea, but just it what it does. I just get consistency of it. I know exactly, and I'm just going to shadow a little bit. I know use my hand there as a palette, which is again. Not the ideal, but um, you don't have to do what I do exactly. You can do it on the page, or so when you're, I, do, I do it on my hand a lot of the time. Now, here we go. So, I say if I had a proper camera, it'd be great because you could really zoom in. And I could show you exactly as I go along. But um, hopefully you'll see a little bit. You'll be able to see, work it out a little bit. It's, it's it's not so I'm putting the shadow now I'm using it very watery across here it's like it's like watery but not watery enough to actually it's like a very faint amount of um a paint on the brush because I'm just using it as a bare shadow so that you can still see the green coming through and that's what I want to see I want to get that green coming through on it now I'm going to put I'm going to just go and edge this eye a bit better now so because I haven't really added edge so far very well I'm going to work a little bit on the ears then so we'll just put this I haven't finished the eyes quite yet I still have to put highlights in 
the same on this side here. Now, I'm going to put a little bit on the ears now. So I'm going to just put this shadow here we've been working on, this dark area. I'm just using my dark color up here. And there's a little bit on the edge of the ear as well. I'm just going to wet it up a little bit. So my brown blue again. And I'm just going to drag it along, take a lump off that. Drag it along the edge like that. And a little bit on inside just this ear here. This Flicking it back out, dry brush. So I just have to get the picture up again. It's like a dry brush, then I have to wet it every now and again and then take it off because if it gets too dry, nothing will actually come off the brush. So you have to wet it every now and again. And then you just sort of, when you wet it, you then sort of take off the excess wet. So it's almost a dry brush, but just enough, enough, enough moisture in it to kind of that it'll take on the page. So I'm going to come back here with little flicks here like this. Keep an eye on the time there. Half, just gone half past, okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get a bit of um, my white, oh, sorry, my brown and my white. So make a kind of a light brown color. I'm just going to come in across on the top of these ears. Again, you notice how I'm holding my brush very far back in my hand. Um, and just a tiny narrow bit here. Narrow a little bit on the edge. And I'm going to do the same over this side. My plan is to get this done as much as to a reasonable stage, as it were, to where you could actually work on it more, but where you can actually see where I'm going in the hour and a half. That's what I try to do with these little um, lessons that you can actually get so far. You could probably work a little bit more on it, but you'd get the general idea where it would just literally be touching up little bits as you go along. So I'm just a, now always think of the direction of the stroke you're going. Always think of what way the, the brush, like it's what you're actually painting. That is so important that you think about what is it you're doing. I, you know, if you're, as I said this before, so little strokes indicate the shape of the ear, they indicate what way those little hairs are going in the ear, so rather than just going forwards and backwards. It's not so much about the color often as the stroke. The stroke is nearly more important often than the actual, um, than the actual brush work, than the actual color you use, which is um, interesting. Now I'm just going to do a little bit more on this one. Flick this back, flicking this this shadow back into the ear. And I'm going to go into the lighter one now as well. Add a bit more white into this now. So just get a little lighter one along here. Add a few little flicker white strokes across here too. Now, now I'm going to start doing a little bit more definition on, on the actual face now. A little bit around above the eyes and a little bit on these hairs here. So, and even on this little bit here, in fact, I might do that. Yeah, I'll work around this little bit here on the eye. So we're going to go into that sort of light brown color I had, which was a bit of white, a little bit of your um, yellow ochre here, a little bit of brown into it. So it's a kind of a light browny sort of shade. And I'm just going to put a few little flicks. Just above the eye. Again, going with the direction of the stroke. Go with the direction. Go with the direction of the actual um, a few lighter ones over here. And again, you can see now I'm using a little brush now, and I'm using it much finer now than before. Little small, tiny strokes, whereas before it was much more much heavier, much more loose, looser in a sense. And, and um, But now I'm kind of getting into the more detail. So I'll add a little bit of burnt sienna into that sort of mix here. And I'm just going to come in with a little bit of the color here, this shade up here. Little small strokes. 
because up at the beginning I was doing rather larger, so I'm going to add little bits of brown into that. Oh, a bit too much paint on that. Make sure you don't bring up, come out with a lot of um. And again, I can use my blue. I can use a bit of my ultramarine. I have ultramarine here in another tray, so I'm reaching into the back. And I want because ultramarine and the burnt umber give it a really um dark shade. And again, now I'm just gonna. I'm just going to get in those little small, a little bit more water on it because it's just getting a bit too dry for me. Now I'm going to come back in on the actual face itself. So it's kind of lighter around his eye area. So a bit of white in with my yellow ochre. And we're going to come in just about, just over from this direction here. can see it going around his cheek. You see, I keep referring, if you look, I'm, I'm referring the whole time back to the actual picture because that's the most important thing is to keep looking back at what you're doing. If you don't, you will go off into your own little world. And I've done it many a time myself. You think, oh, I, I know what I'm doing now, grand, no problem. And then I look back and I think, okay, well, that's completely different than what I was just copying off. So. Mm, I have to start again or I have to change again. So I'm just highlighting little bits here in his face, little tiny strokes. And I'm going to bring that white. That white is coming right up further in the picture than I have it. So I'm going to grab a bit of white from a tray here. There's some white in the back tray here. So I'm just going to add a bit of lighter white. Actually, I might put out some fresh white. So now I'll just get this out of the tray. Now, there we go. Now we go for time. Okay, I might add it, go a little bit over time. But just want to get a bit more done. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to get a little bit more white on this side. So I'm going to put the, bring the white much further up to the eye. And we just, again, little baby strokes, little tiny strokes. It's going to work in this area for a minute or two now. This is where now I can start to define and decide where, where I'm going to change it. Now, I'm going to just bring that back out because there's a little bit of the nose that we did a bit too much on it now. As soon as I use my little finger to balance, um, if you're trying to get a little area, um, I just use my little finger as a balancing tool because if you try to hit the, the um, just straight on, it's very hard to try and get a, a, a to, to actually hit the right spot sometimes. Very, very hard. So I'm just using a little line there. And I just bring that little bit of white back up into it here. A little bit of white in here. Just be careful when you do that you don't um, go in on an area that you've already... I'm just going to bring in a little bit of definition on the nose here as well. just want to check that nose because the nose is a bit, it's a bit lopsided now. And this is where I have to fix my nose, or his, her nose, I should say. Um, I could fix my nose too, maybe. But I have to look at that now. Okay, I'm going to just bring a little bit of light on top of the nose. So I'm just going in front of it just for a second. I know it might, um, I just want to make sure that I'm getting this right, because otherwise I won't be able to see it if I'm sideways. And that's partly the problem. If I do it from the side, I end up actually doing it kind of sideways. So I'm just going to, I'm just really, really, Re-manufacturing re, re this nose, a little bit of plastic surgery going on here, um, which is great. It's great that's the one thing in art, so don't mind me doing these lines in it. I'm just sort of measuring it out as to where I'm going to go with it. So I'm just going to bring that up here like that. So don't see the way I'm just, I'm, it looks a bit strange at the moment, but it's just because I'm trying to work out um, the position of it. Because I, when I drew it initially, I think I was a little bit sideways to the, to the page, and the nose was a little bit... Um, to the side, so I'm going to actually move over. Yeah, just now that I see it, this is a great thing. This is good actually to do this on on a live stream because as you do, you can actually see where I've actually um I change things as I go along. Because sometimes I look back and I think actually you know this actually has to move over or that has to move over, and something has to change a little bit. So I'm going to move this a little bit up like that. 
You can see I'm moving the, a little, cutting in on the nose a little bit here. And that's because the nose, when I did it, it wasn't actually quite, it was a little bit sideways. So, And that's why I say nothing is actually set in stone on a picture. I never get panicky about it. Because I always say that to students when they think, oh my God, I'm after making a mess. That's like, no, no, don't. It's fine. We'll get there. We'll find it. We'll find the nose. We'll find the eye. We'll find the everything in it. Just, just hang in there a minute and we'll get there. Don't worry about it. We'll move on to something in a minute. We'll get there now in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to do, just going to move that there like that. Okay, so now I'm a little bit happier with that, even though it's not finished. I'm just going to put a little bit of my, my browns here. It's two browns together, my red, my reddish brown and my darker brown. And I'm just going to get a shadow there. And I'm just going to bring that across, a little line across here. If I can, just get a little line. I should have run my glasses out. I'm not going to wear them. I do sometimes, and sometimes I get them when my eyes start. I should have moved down the, the blind now because I did this earlier on. I'm going to just um, put a little light on the subject, if you don't mind. A bit more light, but you see earlier on the sun was shining. And um, now yeah, I think that might be a bit better. The sun was shining and I was it was very glaring, so I couldn't really see properly. Um, so now I had, to, I had to just put something over the window for a time. Now, okay, we're just going to move this over a little bit here. So just let me just go in front of this. I apologize for a second just to go in front of it. And I'm just going to get the dark brown. I'm just going to use a little set new, new piece of ultramarine, fresh, fresh bit. It's too sticky now. So that's just a tube of ultramarine. Move the dark into that. Because it'll be a nicer mix on the page sometimes it gets um too sticky because it's um, uh, acrylic paint and it can be a bit too it can get too sticky so i'm just going to bring the nose across like this like that just bring it dark underneath here like that tiny thin line at the top and again i'm using my little finger as an anchor and that's where the little finger is good to do that because it's like um you can use it just use it on a part of the of your um of your of your plate of your of your painting there where it's dry so you don't smoke it in a little bit of white on the top of the nose here mm, better not too much white Now I'm going to bring up, gradually build up the little hairs behind here, just ever so slightly, and there's quite a light bit around by the side of his, her eyes as well, quite a white piece here. I'm just bring that in and down like that. Again, I'm using a little tiny white, so I'm doing the same on this eye here, this side here. This is quite a light, so I'm using a creamy white. So it's basically a bit of white with my yellow ochre, maybe a bit of yellow into it even. Tiny bit of yellow, yellow ochre being the mustard kind of shade. I'm using little small strokes now. And I'm just going to flick. And there's quite a whitish bit under the eye, actually. So we're going to come in quite light under that eye. I'll go in really white for a change, and we might just we might tone it down. It just brings it out nicely. And then that creamy white at the side here. Little small strokes I'm using the whole time. Tell me. Now, a little bit deeper here. I'm going to use these little hair, these little 
I'm going to see here. So I'm going to use my yellow walker now coming up in this part here. Use bits of white through it too because it's little white, little white, tiny white little. I see this is quite a small, relatively small canvas. Um, so obviously, you have to use a smaller brush if you're using it on a. So I'm just going to make my have my the pictures here. If anybody's joined, I just got the picture over the side here, so I'm just um. Making sure that I can see it every now and again, so it just goes off there. So I have to just tune it in. Um, when, you have a, when you have a larger canvas, you have a little more leeway, I suppose, with the strokes that you have, because obviously you can use nice bigger strokes. Um, but I don't have that many. I have one huge canvas right there, which would, well, not huge, but it's quite big. It would be a bit too big for this. And a smaller one, which would be a bit too small. So this is the most, the ideal one probably for it. The moment I'm just gonna put a little more these are again using my yellow ochre my burnt sienna I'm just doing little little small small strokes here I'm gonna bring it out a little bit now I'm gonna bring it out onto our onto our um onto the side here and again a bit more white into that there inside his face and he's got this line be careful where I put this line here this is sort of a bit more yellow ochre into that. You can sort of mix on the page, really. Bring it out into your background. Little flicks out into your background. Just getting a little, there's a lighter bits here. So I'm going to go back, back up here with the lighter. And I'm going to come back with some of the darker ones now in a minute just. Um, there's a dark, lighter one here. There's a darker, and I'm just a little dark, lighter one that comes over across here in front of the eye, eye front of the, um, now I'm just building that. Now I'm going to come back with my darker shade now in a minute. I'm going to get my blue, my blue brown, which is my ultramarine and my yellow, my burnt um, umber shade. And we're going to go in with some of these dark, lines here darken this area here a bit I'll just bring that line on, on the edge of the ear as well Get that on a bit it's got a bit sticky sometimes the uh, acrylic paint because the room is quite warm in here actually because I have, a, I have a heater on so what's happening is the paint is actually drying out a bit as I do it actually I notice I just want to get a light bit in here behind there's a light little bit here actually I'm just realizing I think this Amazing how you really have to look at a picture so often because you can easily miss little bits. Just take things for granted. And you just realise, you look back, oh, I missed that bit. Only a little bit, but still, makes a difference. Oh, maybe a bit too bright there. Come down a little bit of yellow over on top of that. Now I'm going to come back in with some of the dark as I, as I was doing a minute ago. So it's again, say it's my ultramarine and my um burnt umber i just have to think about that for some reason i keep going to say sienna but we're using burnt sienna as well but not just here so i'm going to mix the two of them together and i'm just going to bring bring it into the little sort of widow's peak he has there of that or she has of that shade there i'm going to bring that across in front of the ear and this area here is sort of like as a little shadowy A bit of a dark bit there, shadowy dark bit, not too dark, just here. Like this, I can bring back this down into this because one is going on top of the other, so I can work backwards from one area into the next. So I'm going to put a shadowy one here. So I'm going to add a little bit of a little bit of burnt sienna, my reddish brown, into that, and a bit of my yellow ochre into this shadow as well. 
okay, my, my raw sienna color actually, which is a slightly more, slightly deeper shade. I'm just going to drag that because I want to give a texture to this because the moment this is very flat looking. I want to give it a hair kind of a feeling on it, a fur feeling. Just keeping an eye on the time here, yeah. So I just get a bit more done on the on the body. I won't fix it, finish it out totally. Maybe we'll see anyway how far we get with it. I'll do a bit more now before we uh, give it up. Anyway, don't worry. So I just just gonna come back in here like that. Now I'm gonna work back on my. What I want to do is one of the other pieces I want to do is I want to get the white. The shine on the eye that's very important to get a shine on the eye the white bit in the middle of the eye when you get the light on the eye just put literally a lump of white just make this good and definite just watch and we see where the light's coming from on the eye so it gives it a shine you see the difference now it gives it makes it much more much more alive when you see the shine on the eye and we're going to come down with I'm just going to outline that eye a little bit more it's not just giving it a little more of a, an edge here, just a tiny bit because it's not too much of an edge on it. More white comes along under here. I don't want too much on my brush because it's another thing is to try not to put too much paint on the brush at the same time. Now I'm just going to come back and start to work the white on this bit here. Again, we're going to just have the white on it, but take it off. Don't have too much white, and I'm just going to take the white. I'm just going to build this up here, this area here. Little small strokes, because remember what we're doing. We're doing the fur, and it's much shorter haired at the top, and we're just working, we're letting some of that shadow, and on the under part, just at the mouth, it will still be quite shadowed. So it's a little small strokes like that I so say you can come back anytime if you want you can you can actually what you can do is you can look at this um on youtube later on what i'll do is when i've done this shortly i will upload it to youtube i'm just going to add a bit more of the, the color coming down here actually um and you can you can work it for if you know anyone who hasn't got facebook or if you want to work it you can look at it either on youtube or you can look at it on here recorded um, if you'd like to give it a go and you want to catch up on bits you might have missed or whatever um, just let, just um, yep you can just record it or I should say look at the back of the recording so we're just going to give it. it's strange not having my classes here because I've been so used to having classes several days a week here in the in the in the, in the cabin um, and indeed going to different parts of the country, um, Monaghan and and Cavan and Virginia and Minolte and um, Old Castle and different places all over the place over the last so many years and and of course I say here in my cabin which I, we built last a year and a half ago and for anyone who doesn't know um, what we did was with this this is a wooden cabin you can see a little bit in the background there the, the there it's um it was a cabin that was down in county mayo which is was about home i don't know how many miles maybe 100 miles maybe i don't know about that and um we i found it on a, on a, it was an architect had been using it and um he was getting rid of it so we basically got it um took it apart myself and family and friends Took it apart ourselves, and we had to. I had to literally put a a mark on every single piece of timber, and we got it all dumped in our yard, in our outside the house, like a big jigsaw, and we just built it ourselves. Built it, put it all together again, and it was great because um, it was it was hard work, but you know it was really enjoyable, and I learned actually to slate a roof, so I did. So this time a year and just over a year ago, a year and a bit. I was up on the roof slating, uh, learning how to slate. One of the people in my art class, one of the men in my art class, a retired builder, and he was brilliant. 
uh, Philip, I must tell him you're, th these are on YouTube. You can be tuned in, and he gave me great advice how to how to slate, and so that's what I did. So we basically built this cabin ourselves and got it going, and um, yeah, it was great. I really I love the classes in here, lovely atmosphere in here, and I miss the all the gang so much because which we can't do anything about it at the moment. It's more important to stay at home and stay safe. Right now, that's really what we need to do. Now, what I'm doing here, just aside from all the cabin talk, um, I'm just putting a little bit darker grey. I'm just working and just doing this chin area here. I'm going to come back with a lighter one on top of it now in a minute. So I'm basically using the same shades. It's a little bit more brown in this, but it's basically the blue, the brown, and the white. All this time, the blue and the brown, I say the blue being the, excuse me, <clears throat> the ultramarine. The brown being the uh, burnt umber and then the, the then white. Usually if I'm buying white, I usually go with different whites. You get mixing white, titanium white, uh, always ink white. I usually, if, I, if I'm just going to get a white, um, I usually go for a titanium white. It's a much stronger white. And, um, you know, as I always say, if you have to find, a, you know, one that you have to have in your, if you're on desert island and you have to have your, your paints with you, which white would you bring? I'd bring a titanium white because it's much might be your priority now on a desert island, but it might be. Um, it would be much better than the um, the other whites because it's not near as um. It's a much it's a much stronger white. Now at the very end of the chin, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of white on, or blue, sorry, on its own with white, just a little bit, a very light pale blue here. Okay, pale blue here, and I'm going to dab it. I just might put it even lighter than that. I'm just going to make a little bit of it just along this edge here. And it's barely dabbed in now, barely. And we're going to just put a little bit more shadow underneath here. Again, the same colours, the same brown, blue and white. Doesn't ever change really. Well, it does sometimes, but this and this particular one, it's I'm not changing it. And I'm putting it like a fur shade here. And I'm going to bring this out with a bit of white, a bit more pure white onto that. So I'm going to bring out my white now. So this is why I put the dark shadows underneath. Another reason why I put the shadows underneath. Generally, shadow is underneath. It's like beneath your white. It's a light area. If you think of anything, if you look at something, the shadow is generally beneath. And the that's why I usually like to put it in first. And even if it looks way too dark, I don't really mind because I let it, I just I can go over it later on. I'm just gonna bring that shadow a bit further down actually now when I look at this. But I'm gonna add a bit more white in this part to it. So not quite as not quite as shadowed here. So oh yeah, so to tune in tomorrow. If you have any kids there around um would like to do a kids art class in the morning or at least 12 o'clock i'll be doing a saber toothed tiger um and now i know as i said this is in youtube so if this goes on youtube this will be irrelevant because it won't be it won't be a live stream but for those of you on the live stream and um, that is tuesday the what date today the 31st is it i think 31st tuesday i've lost days track of the days of the week at this stage um yes tuesday the 31st i will you do a live stream of um Saber tooth the tiger, and the reason I'm doing saber tooth the tiger is because it was a suggestion by um, uh, one of the children who was who does be doing my my uh, does my art streams, my classes, um, and is a regular little um, contributor to to suggestions and lovely artwork as well, and um, that little person suggested a saber to the tiger so that's the live stream for tomorrow so if you have any children or know of any children who'd like to join in and draw saber to the tiger in the morning um that is monday to tuesday the 31st of march 2020 and i'll say that for people in the future please god who may tune in and not know when this was done because if they put this up on live stream it won't be very obvious or not live stream, YouTube, I mean. Now I'm just going to shade in a bit here, a little bit more, a little more shadow, little brownie shades in it.
Now we're just going to put a little shadow here. And I'm going to start doing the lighter, the whiter one now because there's a lot of white on them. So I'm going to put a bit more fresh white out. And I think we're coming near the end. What time is it now? It's ten. It's five past six. I'm going to be too long now. Oh, excuse, the, excuse the sound of this. Now, okay, there we go. There we are. Now, let's get going. So I'm just going to add lots of little, take off too much white at one go. If you're very careful, just don't do much too, too much at one go on your brush. And I'll put this nice and white as well. I'm going to put a nice and low. Oh, it's gone again. There we go. And again, as you can see, I'm using very little, light, small strokes. Just getting in these little tiny strokes in places. There's a lot of half-tone shades too. You know, the shades of grey change from darker grey to lighter grey. So the middle grey. So as I say, hopefully now you'll be able to tune in and do a little bit. You'll give it a go. Or even if you don't give it a go, then maybe you might learn something and get a few, you know, get a few tips. I always think art is a bit like when you cook, you know, when you're baking and you look at something and sometimes you kind of, um, you think, oh God, is that the way they do it? They put the sugar in first or they put the flour in first. And so I must try that. So that kind of, I often think of it like that with them. Um, I've looked at our programs. I've got some great ideas. Um, and it's different, you know, you just get tips because every artist does it differently. You know, and, it, and it's, it's kind of like no writer. Again, a bit like baking. It's, you know, there's, there, okay, there's certain things you have to follow. But after that, there's a lot of people will do things differently. If you're a cook, you might do it one way and a cook, another cook will do it another way. Another baker will do it another way. But you'd, um, you do it, you know, you have your own kind of way of doing it. And it's, and it's, and it's so you can, you can mix and match almost. You can sort of say, oh, I like the way they do that. And then somebody says, oh, God, I like the way they do that. And everybody's got their own style as well. That's really important is to build up your own style. So we nice say to copy, you know, to copy something, try and kind of get your style going as well, because um, it's something I always encourage is to try is not to copy copy me in the sense that oh every single you'll never i mean if i was to do it same painting a hundred times it'd be different every single time it's impossible to copy your own picture as i say i had to do it before and it nearly did my head in by the time i got to the third version of it i i was i was i think the first one was i really liked the second one was okay the third one was it was grand but yeah it was nowhere near i thought as good as the first because of spontaneity had gone from it um Try and be spontaneous. Try and, you know, if you have a spontaneous, um, allowing your allowing your own imagination to, to come in. Not imagination so much when you're trying to copy something directly, but in terms of the fact that you allow your own blend of colours. You know, some people use darker palettes. Sometimes people use much lighter colours. Um, we all have our own personality comes out in our pictures. So I'm just going to bring very quickly. I'm just going to, I think we'll just finish up here now shortly because I could work a little bit more on this, but I'm going to just leave it as it is for the hour in one minute when I get down to the bottom, because the idea is that I'm just going to show you what you could get done in the hour and a half or just over the hour, just barely over an hour and a half, down 40 minutes maybe. And I'm just, as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm going in between where I had my, um, my sort of folds of a fur, you see the shadowed areas. So I'm going in between them and just so as I say, hopefully now you'll be able to come back and tune in at any stage where you want to. And I apologize earlier on for my I don't even know if it's on Facebook, probably me looking into the camera looking rather stupid saying, uh, hello, hello, anyone there? Um if it's there, just ignore that one. Unfortunately, internet and phones and technology are not always reliable. Now you see what I'm doing here. I'm just like 
the flicking it's all little flicky motions nice light touch hold the brush back always say that's the one thing i keep saying and um, very important and i'm just gonna so remember what you're doing it's, it's fur so you think about the fur My little flickers and if you have any suggestions what you'd like me to do i have a small little canvas there and i have one very large canvas so um i might do a palette knife picture one of the days um this is monday maybe the weekend i might do it i'm going to I have to spare and spread them out a little bit because i'll be running out of supplies otherwise uh, and i don't know if you can even get them at the minute so i'm a little bit low on that end of things but yeah, once a week, maybe twice a week. Let's see. I'll just go through my my stock and see what I have. Indeed, that's the problem with these times. It's everything is a bit precarious. But you know, when I'm here now, I just completely forgot. I mean, I actually forgot there was such a thing as COVID nineteen there for a long time. Completely forgot. I might as well be. I'm just totally in my own world here, talking to myself and talking to you, whoever's listening. And it's great. Because it's a real, I'm just touching it up with little lighter bits now, little whiter bits. Come back to real pure white in places. Yeah, it's it's great. It's great. It's really is. It's a perfect way to relax. Um, it really, your mind just goes off into another planet. And um, couldn't recommend it enough. Just mentally, it's very good. It really is. Seriously, it's 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 brilliant. Now, what I have to do now, which is one of the hardest bits, probably the whole picture, is I have to do the, um, let's see which is the best brush to do this. Probably the other, I'm just looking to see which brush I have. I have a smaller one again, and it seems to have gone for a walk, but anyway, my brushes seem to walk around sometimes when I'm not looking at it. Okay, there's another little one here. It's a new one anyway, so at least it's a nice kind of point on it. I'm going to get the white, and I'm going to try and be careful with this, because this is where... Um, it's good to get the right you just want to get a nice mix of paint because it's very hard often to do a, a white line or a light line one a thin line I mean any color line so I'm going to just do and you know hold see how light now this I'm holding this so far back I'm not going to do this if I was to do this and try and draw a line I can guarantee it'll wobble everywhere now I'm just noticing something I'm just going to do a bit more underneath here sorry when I'm at it I'm just it's funny when you see it in, in, in here you see it totally different than Just gonna be able to do the bar. Little highlights here. Now I'm just going to give get this again as I say. White and I'm doing it. I'm gonna get really, really light. Just a very hold my brush very light. And I'm just gonna bring out the And as light as you can do, as quick as you can do it too, is the best. And I'm just holding, I'm using my arm to hold the other arm a bit. I don't even mind if I miss if I miss little bits along the way. Let's get a bit more here. You hardly see this as it come onto the face because the face is going to be is white anyway. So so that's it everybody that's the, the picture i've got now i'll put this up it's very hard for you to see it there it looks slightly different um from my view of it here actually i'm just one little bit there actually sorry one little bit i'm seeing here so it's going to be another little bit i could spend another uh, probably a couple of hours doing this but i'm going to just show you what i've done so far in the hour and what 
now into quarters. Just make that a bit lighter. So I'm just looking at it in the in the camera now, and it's it's looking different than on this. But it's hard to judge. I can't really judge it from um. Unfortunately, because it's it's. A little lighter one there. Ooh, a bit darker. Just give it a little bit. Now, I'm going to put a picture of that up on Facebook and you can see what I've done in the time. As I say, I could work away in this for another um, whatever length of time. But um, for now, that's what I've done in now and your quarters. And hopefully it's been a help and hopefully you've learned a little bit. And as I say, you can tune in um, uh, at any time because it'll be on Facebook. And I'll also put it up on YouTube. So if there's anyone you know who doesn't um, have Facebook, they can have a look at it on YouTube. And thanks very much for spending the time with me. And um, thanks, Grania, so much for uh, your suggestion of the cat of Fotia. And um, a lovely cat. And unfortunately, no longer with us. But um, she lives on in a, in, in a lot of people's memories, obviously. So she's a lovely... It's nice to do a picture of a special cat. Listen, um, I'll see you again soon. And uh, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.